On May 21st, 2011, the fifth watcher was raptured. This previously recorded video was found in his archives. Okay, kids, it's time for another case for a creator. It's a series now, because I have some ideas about it, which I could expand on. Today's topic is designed universe. The argument basically goes that the universe is too fine-tuned, too designed, for there not to be a god. Basically, God is credited with pretty two pretty major things, making the universe and making the people in the universe, or the creatures, or the life, basically just life. The other possibility is we arrived here by chance, and when I say that, I'm referring to these, this on a purely celestial level. This argument has nothing to do with evolution. So the question is, what are the chances that a universe like this would be created if it was up to pure chance alone? Well, let's look at some of the universal constants, because there are many universal constants that define our universe. Basically, how strong gravity is, how strong and weak certain nuclear forces are. There's all kinds of stuff like that that dictates physics and everything about our universe. These constants, of course, have to be pretty finely tuned in order to allow for life. And let me show you why. Get ready for some science talk. Gravity, for example, is 10 to the power of 39 times weaker than electromagnetism. And if it had been 10 to, to the 33rd power times weaker than electromagnetism, stars would be a billion times less massive and would burn a million times faster. And therefore, we'd have no stable stars to support planets that could support life. The nuclear weak force is 10 to the 28th power times the strength of gravity. And if it was any weaker, all the hydrogen in the universe would be turned into helium, of course, making water impossible. And that would be pretty detrimental to life. If the nuclear strong force was just 2% stronger, then protons would be impossible and we wouldn't have atoms, which would be a pretty universe as far as life goes. If the mass ratio between protons and neutrons weren't exactly as it is, then protons could become neutrons and neutrons could become protons and there'd be no real basis or stability for chemistry and therefore also no life. Even the unusual properties of water play into this. You know that water, when frozen, when turned into a solid, the solid form of water is lighter in density than its liquid form, which is why ice floats. For every other substance in the known existence, this is not true. It'll sink to the bottom, of course. That makes sense, right? Except for water. And if water didn't float, then the oceans being so cold towards the bottom and all this stuff would freeze from the bottom up and eventually the, all the oceans would freeze and you'd have just a sea of ice and that would be pretty detrimental to the first steps of life being formed in the water. Carbon synthesis, the very basis of life itself and what a fragile process it is, all dependent on the constants established in this existing universe, of course. The ratio of the nuclear strong force to the electromagnetic force makes it possible for carbon-12 to reach a specific excited state typical to the center of stars, and that allows it to bond with beryllium-8, carbon-12, and helium-4. You don't know what that means, do you? Neither do I. Neither do I. And this all has to happen in a window of point zero 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 one seconds or there is no bonding and no life so what a f what a what, a, what a, how fragile must that be for you know the constants to be such that we can allow this little window of time for that to happen taking a look at wikipedia i noticed they list 40 different universal and subatomic and blah 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 all kinds of constants which are of course necessary to define 
the universe as it currently is, and most of them are probably necessary for the evolution of life. So that's 40 different constants that all, if we're slightly, just even tiny little bitty different, life would not be possible in the universe. So let's say you're familiar with a cosmological constant argument, uh, which pretty much states that uh, the constants in the universe, the specific forces and their power, as it were, is just precisely perfect enough to support life in the universe, which is true. And the argument then goes that these cosmological coincidences, which are near infinitely unlikely, suggest then that the universe was designed with a certain constants in order to uh, facilitate uh, life. Here are some objections to that argument that I would like to deal with. One such common response to this argument is that the chances that the cosmological constants uh, are what they are is exactly one. And the reasoning behind this particular counter-argument is that since we are looking back at the cosmological constants and looking at them you know, from a point in which we are already existing, uh, the chances that they are exist that they exist in the way that they exist are one because they already exist in that way. And I feel that that argument is kind of stupid because it's like saying the guy that won the lottery last week had a 100% chance of winning the lottery. He really didn't. Um, anyone could have picked up that lottery ticket. There was, you know, millions of tickets out there. And on the same token, there are millions or even billions of different uh, constants that could have ended up emerging. Um, from the chaos of uh, the Big Bang, and yet none of those did emerge. We are left here with a uh, possibility for many elements and life to exist, and it does exist. But with the universe, it's not exactly like winning the lottery, because with the lottery, someone's destined to win it, I suppose, depending what kind of lottery it is. But uh, with the universe, it's more like you kind of get just the one chance, and then if you didn't get it, SOL. Now the other argument that I know some of you have been screaming at the screen for quite some time now is that of the theory of everything. Now for clarity, we don't have a theory of everything. The theory of everything is sort of a theory of a theory that could be possible. It's a theory that would tie in all the cosmological constants in such a way that the specific uh, values they hold are necessary and that they were inevitable. Two responses to that kind of argument. One, uh, let's say there is a theory of everything. Let's say that that ends up being true. Now, to many atheists, a theory of everything which explains the cosmological constants would take away the argument that uh, God designed or created the universe, uh, you know, by pointing out these constants. Now, the thing you got to ask yourself, though, is even if we do have a theory of everything that guarantees that we uh, have a universe that necessitates that life is possible, you got to ask yourself. Why is it those specific constants? So to me, even if a theory of everything was made and vindicated, you'd still have to deal with that argument. Why does it appear that the universe was not only intended, but destined to have life? Second thing about that is we don't actually have a theory of everything. And uh, it seems a little unlikely that we might come up with one, at least anytime soon. So the idea that there could be a theory of everything that could tie all these constants together and sort of explain away God, as an atheist debater might try to uh, insinuate, seems unlikely that that opportunity will come up for you. Now, if God exists, he definitely created the universe that exists, the universe that we can observe that exists. So the universe that can be explained through science, even if these constants could be explained by science, doesn't necessarily mean that God didn't have anything to do with it. It just means that he set it up in that specific way through a method that can be explained by science. So in that way, the cosmological argument isn't necessarily an argument that is prone to the God of the gaps objection. It can survive without being folly to that. And while some theists may be prone to making God of the gaps style arguments, uh, some also propose a chance of the gaps, which is something an atheist would be prone to making. Chance of the gaps refers to the increasingly small likelihood that we are here simply by chance. Another counter-argument to this I imagine coming up is the possibility of other universes. The reason why a multiverse would supposedly throw a stick in the cogs of uh, 
this cosmological constant argument is that if there are many universes, surely uh, much of these universes don't have the capability to support life, and we're just in the lucky universe that does have the capability to support life. You can believe that if you like, but seeing as how the proof for alternate universes is almost non-existent, and since the expanding of the universe, it's expanding faster and faster and faster, suggests we will experience a big rip rather than a big crunch, which will result in another big bang. I'm thinking that the multi-universe theory is going to be dead pretty soon. Oh, and while we're on it, here's a bonus fact for you. The expansion of the universe, also a cosmological constant. The speed at which it expands is apparently extremely important. If it had expanded even a tiny bit slower, then the universe would have collapsed back in on itself and maybe tried to explode again. Now, the thing is, though, if it had expanded any faster than what it did, then the universe would have sprayed apart in a bunch of tiny mo molecules which never could have formed together into planets and stars or anything of that matter. Now, the force of this expansion had to be extremely accurate. If you were to represent it in a decimal format, it would sound a little something like this. Point zero 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 okay. Uh I lost my place, but it looks a little bit like this. And it's a lot of zeros. So in the end, I think the cosmological argument is decent evidence, though not quite proof that God exists, or at least the possibility that he exists, is certainly one we must all seriously consider. So I think that about handles all the counter-arguments that could come up to the cosmological argument. And if that makes you feel sad that you've been defeated, my atheist friends, it's okay. I'm here to come for you. I am a friend of the atheist as well as the Christian. I don't believe in these kinds of squabbles or boundaries. So let me sing you a song to let you know that everything's going to be all right. When you think you've had enough of this debate, just hang on. You don't want And everybody's wrong Sometimes Sometimes the arguments are wrong Now let's all sing along